There she go. Hi, babe. I was on. I was on my tablet. Then I went to my phone. Then I went to my tablet. I was like, oh. <laughs> so you good now? He's like, can I'm we good just now. Go? You good now? That's what's up. Yeah, well, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We are officially recording. How about that? We okay. Are you going to keep up. all the bloopers? We keeping all the bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> we keeping all the bloopers, man. You know yo, yo, day twine. Yo, day twine, man. We got yo, yo, that's what I'm saying, ADZ. Yo, day, yo, day. We got a special guest in the building right now. Oh, we got a family man. in the building right now, brother. Right foot, king, crown jewels. We have the most beautiful. Come on now. The the extra sexy. Come on, put keep, put it on there. Put it on there. Put you, it all you, on there. Do you see the outfit? Do you see the you see the hoops? Do you see the hoops? You see that? You see that around the you see that around the way for like you know what I'm saying? Yo, D Wood, say what up to everybody. Hello, everybody. How D Woods. D Woods. Oh, Yo, we saw that comment. That you, you first, it was, I think it was a comment or was it a post? It was a post, right? It was a post. It was a, it post. Was a post. Oh, when yeah. I, I, yeah, I copied y'all post with all of the covers, right? Wow, yeah. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna post that for um WCW Women mm -hmm. Crush Wednesday because <laughs> a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't know the, um, the story behind the cover. Right. And then the spread before, so that's why I was like, the real one's gonna know the first spread, and right. then you know, there's some like DK fans like, well, I remember that cover from the um the Rise and Fall episode, the Rise and Fall of Danity Kane episode, and because they really pitted me as like I did that shit to yeah, to them undermine the group, and I'm like. Uh, uh it was these two motherfuckers yeah. right here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know what? Let's speak Yo. on it because me and you was in the comments a few weeks ago talking about that. For all of y'all who don't re remember <laughs> or who who may have missed it, back in the day, yep. you know, young young D Woods right here was a part of an amazing reality re reality show experience called Making the Band, yep. right? So she was. She made the band. It was a group called Danny D. Kane. Went on to did. You know, they went on to do very well. And I ain't gonna lie. I was frustrated as a viewer watching this show because I'm up here like, well, yeah, why are they always giving D. Woods a hard time? You know what I'm saying? As far as I'm concerned, she the flyest one in the whole group. Now they like messing with her. Yo, <laughs> it, it it had to be it had to be something for you during that time. Just like. First, you got to learn everything that comes along with being in a group, but right. then you also have to learn how to control yourself as well as like emotions and things of that nature. In what front of the like? world. Yeah. What was it like just being in the group? Well, um, it's funny. Um, this weekend I watched, um, this is like a teen, it's going to make sense. The story is going to make sense. Okay. So I was watching um, the Netflix documentary for Debbie Allen's um oh, dance yeah. school right. Dada, Debbie the Allen one. Dance Academy. Yes, 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 yes. And it was just taking me back because uh, there was some stories, you know, they had little, little feature stories <clears throat> on some of her dancers, and then and of course Debbie Allen herself on how the 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 struggle for black dancers, black bodies in this Eurocentric beauty standard all over the world, especially in dance. Mm. But um, like the girls were just talking about how they were told they were never going to make it. They should just think of something else to do. You're never going to be a dancer. And they told that to um, Debbie Allen herself, you know, mm. in, in her, you know, coming up days. And of course, as we know, she proved them all wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> and, if you, and if you look at her in her in her early 20s, you're like, what the hell are they talking about? Her legs, right. her body, her whatever. Like she, I was like, yo, Debbie was. She was it. Snatched, okay. Was it. Her legs mm -hmm. was kicking behind <laughs> her head. Behind the shoulders. <laughs> so I, um, I went through a similar experience coming up as a young dancer in my, um, I went to a performing arts high school in Atlanta, Georgia, Tri Cities High School. Ah! Hey, hey. No, no. So that, that's the same one that Candy, number one, Candy Burris. Yes, our alumni is so deep. 
You know what I'm saying? We got candy. Well, all of Escape went all to All of Escape, candy. right? Yes. Um, Outkast, um, mm -hmm. producer, Bangladesh, Keenan Thompson, uh, just just we, the Broadway performers. Just like we got, we deep got, off in, yo, in the streets. Crazy. That's crazy. And me. I <laughs> went. Andy Woods. <laughs> Andy Woods. That's what. Take and so it. I just remember my dance instructor and I and I had to like give it up to her after after watching this Debbie Allen special. I was like, and this woman, Dawn Axum, who was my mentor, you know, she got on us and we had an audition for for um for Alvin Ailey. They did a workshop oh. with us. Mm. Oh. And there was something said in the workshop before the audition about, you know, black girls, if y'all got big thighs, if y'all got too much booty, you know, you might as well just like hang it up. And I was look, I looked down at myself, I was like, uh, well, I guess, <laughs> and I was, in, <laughs> wow. I was in, I was in ninth grade. I didn't show up to the audition the next oh, day. Wow. And, and then on the, um, on that Monday, my dance instructor, Dawn Axon, pulled me to the side and cussed me mm. out so cold, mm. but out of love, because she was like, don't you ever, mm. don't you ever count yourself out because of what somebody else says to you. Mm. She wow. so much. And she's, she's thick, too, you know what I'm saying? She's like, and her legs go past her head, and she's like, look at me, look at you. And she really, like, drove into it, because, I mean, the majority of her students, and this is a, you know, basically an all black school, all black high right. school, South Side, East Point, um, Atlanta, Georgia. So that's all you have in there are girls who are built like brick houses, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We, and of course, like at that time, it just wasn't, it wasn't the popular thing, you mm -hmm. know? And um, so the next, the next uh, round, the next summer, I auditioned. I got in. I got a full scholarship to the, um, to the summer and dance pro summer intensive dance program, and I took every class that they wouldn't kick me out of. I was in there with company members, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I did the most, you know. And so when I was in making the band, and they tried to create this story of me being overweight or having body issues Listen. i was like don't i was like no 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 don't take me Ain't back it. there i, I yeah. already overcame that battle right. if you wow. want a story let's have a conversation but you know as reality tv they just trying to make conflict and the what the producers told me after the fact was well you just don't seem like you have any struggles and we need to make you mm. relate and i was Are like you serious wow you can pick other shit <laughs> yeah, pick other shit. That's well, right. We can talk about other shit. So, um, at that time, you know, we, there was reality TV out, and people, you know, sometimes say, "Oh, you guys were the beginning of reality TV." No, the fuck, I wasn't, because I watched reality TV. Right, right, the real world. Right. They just start to pull it all together. If it came out in a certain era, they just want to put it all together. But you know right. what, though, but the thing is, what it's also a compliment because they're telling you that. Yours was the first one that they really remember. Yours, that had, made an yours had the big impact on them. So they weren't paying attention to the other ones. Yeah, but I'd be like, don't age me. I am not that old. <laughs> I am not. That's, 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 that's a being kind in, uh, in, in uh, Kevin Powell, you know, the, the real world. Yeah, like yeah, that's, yeah, that's MTV way back then. And it's so funny because I was really little. And I watched the real world and I was like, oh, that would be so cool if I could do something like that. But they probably won't even be doing it by the time I'm old enough. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Right. Look just like hip hop was that. a fad. Just, have, just like hip hop I, was a fad, right? I spoke too soon. Oh. So, you know, because I had, you know, grown up watching people, like you said, like Kevin Powell, like Heather B, like, um, you know, the, the, there was always like a token black person. And I really took, notice of how it was always difficult for them because mm. they're the token and they have to represent like all of us at the same time of being themselves and so i was like i gotta think like playing chess now that i'm on this show you mm. know what i mean so i was like i can't you know just show my i'm really like calculating and people might say oh 
you look so serious on the show when they meet me in person. They're like, oh, you're real goofy. Like, you're funny. You're this. But you always look so serious. So I was I was always like thinking like so intensely, like, how is this going to look? If I right. say this, are they going to play it against me? Um, this, that, and the other. So what I did was with, with the two dollars and fifty cents that they was paying me, you know, I was <laughs> <laughs> I hired my own publicist and I think that's who introduced me to her name is Christina Parker. Do y'all know Christina I remember, Parker? I remember Christina Parker. Hold on, hold she, on. So hold on. So what were you insinuating? That's who probably what? That's who introduced me to you all to Kings. That's who set mm -hmm. up. Let me, let me, first... Hold on. Now, 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 let me explain. Let let us go uh, ahead and and and, and, and put, you explain. Let me hit reverse on the camera so we can get a different angle. Hold on, a before before you explain that. Before you explain. Okay. That, okay. Okay. Remember, during this time, this is like oh eight seven oh seven going into oh eight. Remember, mm -hmm. I jumped to Double XL. I was still edit editorial director, so I would get like the blue lines. Mm -hmm. And everybody would keep me up to date. And I remember Jermaine, I think Jermaine. That's Dave, who she Jermaine introduced Hall. me to. Exactly. Yes. Jermaine Hall. Jermaine. So, yep. So Jermaine, I think, talked to Chris. To, yeah. I believe he talked to her originally. And then, hey, you pick up. So I, well, I'm how I'm going to pick up. And, and I think ultimately it got passed. Was, was Cara a part of that? Cara Donato? Yeah. Yeah, because y'all was on Atlantic, right? Well, Christine, I guess going back, Christina and Jermaine set up the first spread. I wasn't I wasn't on the cover. I was in the magazine. In the magazine. Yep. Did, and it was I just the interviews. Spread. I did both interviews. Yeah, you did that interview. So that was the one that was like at the Chelsea Hotel with the with the orange um yeah. curtains right. and everything. Right. Yeah. And right. My, I brought my boyfriend to the set. He was fuck. He was mad. He was jealous. He was like, "I'm gonna, I'm coming with you." I was like, "I ain't like, I'm gonna be doing no back shots or nothing." He was like, "I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be right there." And I was like, "Okay, yep. you be there right there." But the whole point was like, let's put you in front of an audience that is actually gonna appreciate your mm -hmm. body type, mm -hmm. and also being a token in a pop mainstream group on a pop mainstream um you know network my my thinking was she never said this but my thing was i was like i always gotta make an effort and reach back to my community because when this is over because the ex expiration date is any time we're dealing with the guy that you know was in charge you know what i'm saying i was right, like right. any <laughs> moment whenever and i was like whenever it's over i gotta make sure the homies know that I'm one of them because I can't then try to become mm. them because they, they ain't gonna be like, nah, you we run away, I'm running white girls, like you know, what I'm right? <laughs> so right, that's right. How, like, I was always like, and yep, get together like that. But go ahead with y'all, so because I never understood why y'all went in, in and hollered at the label, y'all should have just came straight to me. And we so, that, so that was that was two different times, that was two, two different, different times. times, that was yes. two different times. And so, <laughs> you know, just, just to give you some perspective, right? Just to give you some perspective now, there may have been an introduction to this person or that person, you know, okay, that, that may have existed, but you have to understand. From our perspective, like you were always on the radar. Like you was always on the radar. You was always like, like when, when you look at that whole Danity Kane experience, like like D Woods was like the one. Like that's like okay, that's why it was such a pleasure. That's always <laughs> such a pleasure. I mean, doing the first shoot, I mean, that was dope. It's like, okay, cool, we got you in. You know, um, you know, I got the call because you know, I get called for stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? When we, when we got, when we, you know what I'm saying? When it's when, when it's cream of the crop, we need a. We call when, when, it's, when it's the cream of the crop. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay, let me go ahead. So we went ahead, did that first joint, but it was so dope. Knowing going into the cover, when we was gonna come back, and it was just like okay, we're gonna go ahead and do the Danny D. Kane cover, but but we not just gonna do the cover with the whole group. We're gonna do the cover. We're gonna do a split cover. We're gonna do the cover with the whole group, and we're gonna do a whole other cover with only D Woods. <laughs> with only D Woods, you know, because that's how it should be, you know. And I'm pretty sure. And, and, and we we've had that. And, and, and so you tell us 
I mean, obviously, you had nothing to do with that. It wasn't like, you know, you pulling it to the side or you campaigning, you know what I'm saying, or you doing something inappropriate to go ahead and ensure that you get your own cover. It had nothing to do with that. You know, we just always thought you was dope. You know, you was, you was, you was like, out of, out of everybody, you know, you were, uh, you know, like like our high, y'all, you were the top draft pick. And Dawn, so, let's let's remember Dawn. Dawn was cool too. Like she, she no, Dawn was dope. Dawn was yeah, dope. She was dope. I just I know for sure that you had gotten letters. You had gotten people to to write in about you. So, oh yeah, y'all told me that. <laughs> you know what I mean. So that that also heightens like the anticipation of being able to take you from just that inside shot to you getting your own as well. Um, but did I, it hate, I personally hated the fact I just it just came across like you was getting bullied, and I thought that was whack. Mm. You know, so I thought that it was appropriate, <laughs> you know, for you to be able to come on home. You know, it's like okay, you know, they hold on, they they don't appreciate you. you know what mm. they don't appreciate, it's like no, 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 come come on home, come on home. You know, what I'm saying where where you know where where everybody's you know kind of looking at everybody else kind of sideways, but they looking at D like hold on a second. You know, what <laughs> saying? she she's a queen in this kingdom. Right, Stop playing. and and how how did that work with the dynamic of everything once it came once it out came out or, or even beforehand, like at the shoot and everything? Oh my gosh, uh, the the shoot was very difficult. I will say because um, if you if you ever go back and look at any pictures, there's very few pictures of Danity Kane where I'm standing in the center. I'm usually on the outside on either side and that's because there will always be this competition this elbowing each other out wow. to get into the center and i just would stand back and let them get all that in, and then i would just come and take my place wow wow Where am I going? Where you in the center <laughs> yeah i mean but i think that is because the um it was photographer fun. Yeah, it was because it was y'all were placing who you wanted where you wanted us. And if you and I remember we had an interview, it's so funny. We had an interview with um Wendy Williams and um and Charlemagne. Right. And Wendy was like, Why are you looking? She was, you know, she was making a comment, she was joking, she was like, You look like you're ready to fight, you look like you're ready to this, this, this. And I don't know, I was like, Oh, you know, they just were telling us to look fierce, but really it was because. I was getting elbowed. I was getting pushed. I was getting all kind yeah, of literally, like, literally elbowed. Literally, literally, like <laughs> yeah, there she go. There she go. <laughs> Look at that thigh, me. That's, my, that's, my, <laughs> that's my family. My family heirloom right there. <laughs> Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Like, you know, people used to say, you know, they was like, "You must be one of them Woody girls." <laughs> wow. And like, how do you know? I'm like, because I can tell by your thighs. Everybody in your family got them thighs. So. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, um, yeah, everybody in my family on both sides, on my mother's side and my father's side. So, wasn't no way that I was not gonna get them. Wow. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a very uncomfortable photo shoot just for that. But you know, I was excited to be there because of the relationship, and I wanted it to be. I wanted to have good pictures. I wanted it to be like the the shoot before we had these amazing amazing pictures and amazing response and everything. And the rest of the group was just, and especially at that time too, we were not. Yeah, it was it was a bad time. So mm, wow. <laughs> um, when because at at that time we had um, Jay Irvin as our manager, and um, funny funny story like the boyfriend that was so jealous at the first shoot is the one who actually introduced me to Jay wow. and that's how I be I got the relationship and I asked him to be our manager so there's a lot of things and some of my friends now they try to encourage me to tell these kind of backstories but I'm a really humble person and I don't want to feel like I'm like trying to name job me like I did this and I did this but they're like, you should take pride in the fact of the things that you were doing to make the situation good for everybody. Right. But I wasn't I wasn't getting, you know, the credit or I wasn't getting the appreciation. It was just a lot of jealousy and, and threat, you know, like people feeling threatened or whatever mm -hmm. from, from our from the group members to our higher ups, too. So right. I had to figure out how to 
do what I knew I needed to do because it's my career and it's me, but also not, you know what they say in the 48 laws of power, never outshine the master. You know what I'm saying? Like play myself down, but also be like, we need to get this. Right. You know what I mean? So Jay Irvin called me and he was just like, oh, so I can't remember his words exactly, but I remember his tone. He was just kind of like, so you just you just gonna get a whole cover by yourself, or and I was like, what do you what do you mean? He was like, they give you a, your own cover, and I was like, what? And I was like, they gave everybody their own cover, and he was like, no, just right, right. <laughs> like, like oh, 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 there you go, there you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As we so should. I was like, we'll cover though. That's a dope cover. Come on, come it on. It is. Now. Come on and now. when I when I posted it, so many people was like, I still got my issue. I still got that copy. I still just... one of my homeboys, he's so proud. He's like, he's like a big brother, but you know, the big brother that if I let him hit it, he wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> he's like one of them. <laughs> oh, what? And, oh. What? He's like, I didn't know you felt that way, but come on. <laughs> Yo, but, there's, um, gonna, there's gonna be a lot of people, a lot of people in that part are gonna crack up because exactly mad. That's like, yo, ain't that like Sean? Ain't that like Rob? <laughs> like, but he, he still has his cover, and like, you know, I signed it and whatever. He and he was like, because I'm in LA right now, and you know, he was one of the first people. I was like, I'm in LA, let's link up, you know, because we can't see a lot of people, but right, right, because it's COVID times. That's right. And as soon as I went over, and he, you know, he has his his girl and everything was there. He was like, wait a minute, D, I hold up. He went wherever in his bookshelf. He came back with the with the issue. He was like, I still got it. It's in mixed condition. I was right. like, oh, you ain't wow. even laminated. It's still good. You ain't even laminated. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah. What was the reaction like after, like when when it actually dropped, like with family, fans, all that? What was the reaction? Bandmates, um, bandmates. What was that like? You got to tell us about the bandmates. Yeah, yeah. There was a little, there was a little, you know, ruffling of feathers. I mean, they didn't say it to my face, but I know they said it in other rooms or whatever. But um, my thing was like, well, look, if this was Maxim magazine, I would expect they put Aubrey on the cover. Mm -hmm. If this was Latina, XYZ, whatever, I would expect they put Andrea on the cover, you know? Yeah. So, you know, this is Kane. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, 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 they know they, they know they audience, right. you know? Right. <laughs> Yo. But, um, you know, I, because I'm usually a tomboy and I'm, I'm very like, I wear... I always look like I'm getting ready to go to like a hip hop dance class every everywhere I go or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was a lot of attention that I was not used to getting. I was like, wow, wow, you know. And then I'm also like the baby sister. I'm always like somebody's like little sister or whatever. So it was kind of like, oh, okay. You cause y'all know my first name is Juanita. Like, oh Nita grew up. Oh mm -hmm. that's right. You know? Um but yeah, so it, it was it was interesting. There was an interesting like shift of like, wow, like I'm I'm a I'm a woman now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Was it like the high school homies and, and like the boyfriends, the exes and all that? Did they all come out? Yep, they sure did. They sure did. <laughs> yep. It was on that I, yo, I always loved you. They was on that boat. I mean, it was just like, you know. Right, right, right. I was right. to see you win. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's good to see you. Know, I always knew you was a star. Now the whole world knows. You know, those kind of things. Like the future text. You know what I'm saying? When you're like, tell your mom I said, hey. Like all that. Like, that's the point. I know this versus isn't about me versus you. Like, where'd that come from? Like, where'd all, where all this come from? <laughs> Yo, yeah. Like, Yo, hey, what was it like interviewing her, though? So so I'm I'm real I'm real I'm real so I'm real curious, you know, because we got we got the uh we got we got the triple uh we got the trifecta going on, 
right? Okay. You know, performing art school, you know what I'm saying? Talking about Debbie Allen, you know, reminds us of the fame days. Uh, you know, you let us know how bona fide you are as a dancer. Uh, we were introduced to you as a dope singer, you know, but now these days you're doing so much acting. It was was that always something that was on the menu as well? Yes, actually, um, uh, upon entering making the band, I was also just graduating NYU, and I was a act. I came in as an acting major at NYU, but I actually graduated out of the individualized study program, the Gallatin program, where you you create your own curriculum. Wow. So I um. You know, I came in as a as an acting major, but I've been doing theater since I was five years old. My first professional theater experience was playing the little girl Raynell in August Wilson's Fences. Oh wow! And this is in this is in New England, where where I'm from in Springfield, Massachusetts. So I've been doing theater. I've been doing dance. You know, modern, contemporary, West African tap, ballet, um, musical theater, jazz, um, and then really um, got, into, got into singing. Well, I was always singing, but the musical theater training, actually I got voice, you know, voice training, but, you know, just singing in the house, singing in church, singing with friends or whatever, and getting into the studio and stuff when I was, um, when I was 14, because at Tri-Cities, there were so many like people getting record deals. And um, one of the, one of the top songwriters he goes by the name of Pooh Bear. He's he's like my big brother. And he actually wrote he wrote on the first Danity Kane album. But he brought me to the studio for the first time because he was a senior at Tri-Cities when I came in. And he saw these little hip hop. That's when I first moved from Massachusetts to Atlanta. He saw these little hip hop girls walking around looking like, you know, TLC, you know, uh, <laughs> disciples. <laughs> and he was like, yo, me and my group, we're shooting a video. So. I came, I went to the studio from there. I was writing in the studio. So I've been doing this like for real, for real. My it's been my whole life. Yo, yeah. Wow. The backstory is crazy for you to get down like that. Now, when you say that he saw like these girls, was it you, sisters? Like what yeah, me and my sister Chanel. You know Chanel from um Little Wayne's Young, um, Money. Young, Young Money. Money. So yeah, Chanel's, you know, she was doing the same things. As me, but we just kind of went a little bit different because after a while, we sisters is like, all right, you I know, what I want to do this. I want to do it my way. You know, right. I want my own thing, you know. But <laughs> we collaborated um, last year on a project called Project Girls Club, and we re-released some songs with other females in the in the hip hop game or in the music industry. A lot of the girls that we collaborated with um had been had been through some stuff in the industry and want to own it for themselves it's like we're going to take our um our lessons we're going to take our professionalism and we're going to own our own destiny with it and we started that project um i started also we we started the the girls club actually like the year before i did um making the band and we were just doing like talent shows and just yeah. like you know what I mean? Getting it on. Because we would see all these dudes come up to the talent shows. All the dudes with like the same shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like be like one mm. rapper with like 30 dudes on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, man, we can be a movement too. Because we knew dancers, singers, songwriters, female, you know, mixing engineers, makeup artists. And we're like, you know, why are we... You know, why are we trying to do this solo out here? And we know that it's a man's, you know, world or male dominated industry. Like, let's team up. Let's be like a sorority. And we used to, like, we don't have fun just like the dudes. We just ain't going to be studio furniture and be quiet when right. we go to the studio. We're going to go in there. You scared to go to the studio by yourself because they always be looking at your booty? Okay, cool. We're going we gonna to go with you so you can focus mm. on work. Mm. You see, y'all got to think about those things, too. It's like a whole nother element and level of getting your talent out, trying not to get objectified. And it's, it's just everybody kind of hollers. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. just learn to work around it. Yeah. And then and it's like, and I want to enjoy what I'm doing, too. So we we had a lot of fun. There's a lot of pictures of us standing on top of bars and speakers. and like, Right, <laughs> you know, right. 
female DJs that we know. We're like, yeah, play our record, break this, you know, break the record for us, you know. So, you know, and just really taking and owning the space, like we, you know, being based in Atlanta, we would go into the strip clubs too. We'd befriend the strippers and be like, yeah, dance to my song. You know what I'm saying? City nights. Magic City, Onyx, uh, Blue, Blue Flame. Flame. There you go. <laughs> Which one was your favorite, though? Um, I'm going to have to really... Blue Flame has the best wings See? to me. But <laughs> Onyx had, like, the best, like, whole meal. You know mm. what I mean? Like, you can get <laughs> salmon, you can get a steak... But if you really want like a really good and it's and everybody says if you go to Cheetahs in Atlanta, the strippers are trashed, but the food <laughs> is A1. And people don't really wow. go there for the dance. People don't understand that food mission when you go over there. <laughs> That'll wow. be the deciding factor. <laughs> You're like, um, let's get the wings. And um, actually, shout out to one of one of my really close friends. Her name is um well, she goes by fire starter but she is the founder of vertical joe's and she started doing pole classes and ascended into stardom because now her recent her most recent work is she did all the stunt coordination and pole consulting work on stars networks on p valley oh so She's part of the girls' club too. Yeah. Yo, the careers take off into these different ways that you would never even imagine. You right. Imagine that. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure that wasn't like the super goal until the opportunity opens up. And then it's like, now she could do that in any kind of setting. That's crazy. Right. Because she, you know, she was one of our dancers and um, she also graduated from Tri City. So it was just like, all right, how do I just how do I own this and, and make this like a like I'm not at the, at the whims of other people's decisions or like you know being used and and discarded and it's like shoot I'm about to make myself uh you know I'm like a franchise out here the the strip club actually come to me well not mm. me but her if I was if I was her talking <laughs> they actually the strip club owners would come to her to train their dancers to oh, do old wow. tricks and and then you know she just has like uh her her i'm i really champion her because like she really took something that could have just objectified her and put her like in a category and something shameful or whatever and she's like nope she's training you know women with disposable income like doctors lawyers who just want to mm. spice up their marriage or just want mm. something fun and flirty to keep them in shape because it is a lot of work you know that's the work that is some work. Up up. That is that. some serious work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely is. But the cool thing is, she ultimately put herself in a position where she was taking control of her own destiny. Yeah. You know, right. which is which is which is me trying to you know transition because I I would love for you to just tell people for people who don't understand, right? You know what happened to D Woods once making the band was over because a lot of people. You know who don't who do reality show. We don't hear from them, you know, much after reality. But you are one that I know for sure, just by watching and following. You took control of your own destiny. It's like you, you know, continue to you know make music, independent projects. You got the, you know, theater, film, uh, TV. Like like talk about that transition and what it was like for you once that that run was over with the show. Well, um, being that I kind of saw the writing on the wall for a long time. I just was like, okay, let me make, let me make relationships with people, you know? Um, and I know you've heard this, like, but befriend, you know, just don't go try to befriend like the person in the top position, but what's up with their assistant? What's up with the intern? Because they're going to rise in the yeah. ranks and they're, they're going to remember you. They're going to want to see you win or, putting you on is going to help put them on. So, you know, everybody's, you know, wa one hand washes the other, whatever. So I did a lot of that in the last months of the group. And no, I didn't know the group was ending, <laughs> but yeah. I, you know, I just had to use my sixth sense, you know, and um, I just started recording music and just, you know, 
trying to find my voice again because being in a group and trying to blend and not really and, and trying to make it work and it was kind of like a marriage mm. when you forget what you want and you're trying to make everybody happy and so i had to remind myself what makes what's my expression how do how would i sing if somebody wasn't telling me to blend with somebody else's voice or what would i write as a lyric if i didn't have to compromise making someone else happy you know so um i did a lot of that and almost immediately i just started you know calling on relationships and just doing stuff not with like a goal but i just started doing stuff i just started shooting videos i just started doing shows and you know just trying to get back to like enjoying doing the work because i really wasn't enjoying it and you know mm. when you're doing something that you love and you stop loving it you really have to like evaluate what is going on like i wasn't in i wasn't enjoying performing on stage i wasn't enjoying being in rehearsal and i've been on stage and in rehearsal since i was three years old so i was wow. like okay oh, this is something gotta change so um yeah i just started doing stuff the first um situation that i got myself into and i wasn't trying to be no ceo i wasn't like hey i'm the boss now but you know a gentleman came to me and was like look did you ever you ever think about um uh fontana music fontana universal music and i was like who was that you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, and like, well and he just kind of walked me through the process like so i got a distribution deal through them i established wood grain entertainment, wood grain which is entertainment. My dope name. that's dope right name. that's right <laughs> that's right and i just was like yeah i just i just want to do put music out you know and um a really dope woman. She goes by the name of Dee Dee Murray, and she walked me through a, a, a independent process. And she was um, like really like right hand with um, organized noise and Dungeon Family for years. So she, Is she related to Ray Murray from yes. Dungeon Family. There yes, they go. they were married. What? Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> okay, okay. So Dee Dee really like you know. She really ushered me. She basically showed me how to make this a business for myself, make money off of the music. Cause I wasn't making no money off of my music. Mm. So getting getting the right, um, you know, associations and memberships with the Grammy Academy, with Sound Exchange, with figuring right. out, you know, digital distribution and all these different, you know, marketing tools that you can do. And so I was like, okay, I I am a label right now you know right. but did um, you carry did you carry over some of the things that you learned from diddy i'm gonna say this and i don't mean this to be um i don't mean this to be shady or anything i didn't learn anything <laughs> from him he didn't teach me anything because he wasn't in the room with us mm. in the, to teach us anything other than you know, it was a very oppressive and a very intimidating, you know, um, controlling like thing. So it was it was like I didn't learn anything except what I learned about myself being in a high pressure, um, highly visible, uh, whatever, a lot of tension atmosphere, how I can mm. still function in a very un pleasant atmosphere and still right. be my be my best with what i had it wasn't the best i could do it was just the best that could be done wow that wow so that's why i, I kind of looked at things of like if y'all liked me and danny kane you gonna love, <laughs> you gonna love d was without <laughs> the shackles without having you know that's why my, my project that I've been kind of like a saga project called My Favorite Color mm. because um, I was in black and white for so long. I was analog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, you're gonna, now you're gonna see all the colors. So I did volume one. It was like, you know, an EP. Um, I, I switched from Fontana, I put out the the gray area through um, Fontana and, and TuneCore. You can still find it in different places. I'm gonna re-release it soon. And I'll let y'all know about that later. Absolutely. But <laughs> it's you. called the gray area, and and I really in the intro I say, you know, 
in the most uncomfortable spaces between what's black and what's white, what's dark and what's light, you know, that's where I had to find myself again, you know? Mm. And then the next project, my favorite color goes from three different colors that it's like, yeah, you thought you knew who you were when you were this one color, but that was just one phase of your life. And then you went through another color and it was like, oh, that's my favorite color now because blue represents heartache, blue represents sorrow. And that that's what I'm feeling right now. That's what I'm learning about right now. And then the other colors and the other colors. So y'all, y'all see a lot of colors. With <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to tell you. So I remember, you know, so initially seeing you on the show, definitely with feeling your energy. Uh, those, those two uh, King interviews that we did, you know, it heightened it. And I was like, man, you know, just real dope, real cool person. You know, I'm like, man, she's really, really cool. You know, definitely want to continue to see her win. Uh, another thing that I really appreciate in terms of like our journeys colliding again, I moved to Atlanta from LA in 2009 and I was working with Monique and was working on the Monique show. Right? And so at some point in time, you know, young D Woods, you know, she's on the show, you know, so I'm up here like, Oh, this is like so dope to go ahead and see you doing your independent thing. And then it's like, it was great to see you, you know, uh, uh, you embrace that and, and and really occupy that space and say like you know what I'm gonna take control of my own destiny I'm gonna still win. But what was what what made me such an even bigger 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 D Woods fan is I worked on several different uh, BET shows. I remember when I was working on the game, and I look up. I see like, you know, just a bunch of, you know, background talent, different, just all different types of people that was, you know, at the show to be a part of some scene. And I look up and I'm like, man, that's good. <laughs> you know, it was just so cool for me because at that time I didn't know, you know, acting was a part of your thing, but it showed me the commitment, the dedication, and to be like, you know what? I'm going to earn my keep, right? You know, it's like, you know what? This is something that, I'm, like you obviously were really interested in to and to see like that continued ascension. Um, and you're in LA now, you know, doing a piece. So it's like it's been a constant, constant, constant grind. So, you know, talk about like what that's been like, you know, for you. It's like, okay, you know music, you got somebody teaching you the music game. What is it like really getting into the acting game on a on a major level? Yeah, so um, like I said, you know, I started acting when I was really young, but I was doing mostly theater. So um, I'm very comfortable in the theater, but I haven't done as much on screen work. Um, but my, my first actual on screen role was in um, Stomp the Yard. And that was like right at the mm. same time as, uh, as the group came together. We didn't have a name yet, but I did Stomp the Yard and Will Packer, um, Will Packer. yeah, he, he looked out. He was like, yeah, we're going to make sure we, we find a place for you. The whole scene didn't make it in the movie, but whatever. But <laughs> you were there. But I was you were there. there. That's yeah. right. I was in it. <laughs> right. So, um, and everybody knows. Over at Morris a, Brown. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows as an actor. You know, you got to have certain materials, you got to have your head shot, you got to have your reel. And it's hard to get material on camera. So um, just having little bits and pieces doing in independent movies or doing web series things like, of course, like I want to be in the next, you know, Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I think I deserve it. However, I got to have the evidence I got to have stuff on screen um, that I can capture and put in a reel and people got to know my name and trust in it. Um, so they'll, they'll think, Oh yeah, she was in that group. She's trying to act now. Mm. And it's like, no, 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 baby. I was trying to act when I put down that money to go to that university that I'm still in debt for uh, right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. That's, that's the real grind. I feel you. But right. you know, I bounced between still, you know, doing theater. Like I, um, this time last year, I was a part of the, the revival production of Intazaki Shange's For Color Girls at the Public Theater in New York. And that was a monumental experience because to do off Broadway and to do that piece, like I learned monologues from For Color Girls when I was in high school mm. and to actually perform it on the, 
off Broadway stage. We were we were um scheduled to move to Broadway during 2020, but you know, people yeah, yeah. coughing and stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> But do you but, feel as though that that body of work in particular, does it resonate with you different now that you're grown from when you were oh, yeah. In, yeah. Definitely, definitely, because there's stuff that you experience as a woman is really a, a rites of passage type of piece. Um, Cause like I said, I first was introduced to it when I was 14, when I was in ninth grade. And um, when I performed one of the monologues, I, I remember the actress that I saw perform the lady in red monologue. Uh, the one that's, you know, kind of like typically everyone knows cause she talks about her, her abusive husband throwing her kids out the window. Right. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, the Tyler Perry uh, version movie, uh, Michael Ely was the abusive boyfriend and Kimberly Elise was the was the woman um, talking about it. So when I saw that monologue when I was 14, I was like terrified. I was terrified because mm -hmm. the woman, the actress, she was so intense and her voice resonated in my in my memory. So years later, and this was um, this was like 20. 2015, I was doing a play in Atlanta um, called um, Jar the Floor. So, you know, I worked with the Kenny Leon um, theater company, True Colors, in, in Alliance Theater. And these are like the, you know, premier theater companies and houses in Atlanta. So I'm in rehearsal. We're doing Kenny our Kenny Leon, that's, he also did Fences. He's a beast. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Kenny Kenny's a beast. <laughs> yeah, he's that dude. He's that dude. He, he be pulling it out of you. With Denzel, he did fences with Denzel and Philly. Yeah, he's 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 yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, so he be pulling it out of you. He's like, I'm not gonna let him down. I'm gonna be on my <laughs> on my shit. So we're in rehearsal and we're doing the table read. And it's my first time, you're like meeting the other actresses. And when this woman who plays like because it's about a family, like four generations of women. I was the daughter, uh, mother, grandmother, and great grandmother. So the woman who's playing the great grandmother, she's like in her sixties at this point. Um, she started talking, and I was like, "That's the lady who was who was in for Color Girls when I was fourteen, because like her voice, Whoa. I was just like." Oh. That, oh, had wow. to be, that had to be trippy. And I and I told her, I was like, you you were Lady in Red in, in For Color Girls at the Alliance. And she was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was there. I saw it. And when as Whoa. soon as you started talking, I remembered it was you. And she was like, and then look at you now, baby. You on stage with me now. And so I was like, yes, ma'am. But wow. so doing stuff like that, kind of going back and forth, um, trying to break into getting more stuff on screen. I'm really appreciative of Patricia Cuffey Jones, who is the creator and director of the series that I'm shooting now in LA called Stuck With You. Mm. Because I did a web series for her for free because I was just out in LA just trying to audition. And right. then a friend was like, oh, I know someone, she's shooting a web series, you want to do it? I mean, it's it's you know, it's know, just gonna be something good for your reel that you can have some material, that's that's really all they can pay you. I was like, I'll do it. So we, we created a good relationship and that was in 2016. So Whoa. last year, she just hit me up on Instagram, mind you. She was like, D was, where are you now? And I was like, well, I'm in New York. And she was like, call me. And I called her. I said, hey, how you doing? Long time. No, you see here. She was like, I have a role for you. Wow. And I was like, really? And she was like, let me know if you're interested. She explained the show a little bit. And she was like, I'm going to send you a scene. If you can put this on camera, I just got to convince the network because it's on UMC Network. And mm. she just she just got picked up, and she was like, "I know who I want," and I she want was like, "I just got to convince the network." So I read it, I put it on tape. So now we're doing season two, y'all. Crazy, yes, yes, that's, that's what I'm like, like, <laughs> <"Yes, laughs> <"Yes, laughs> talking about. Before Tuesday, <laughs> right? That's what's up, though, man. Oh my goodness. So now. Are you looking for those? What What are some of those other kind of shows that you're looking to get into? Just putting it out there for the world to, to grab onto. Okay, I'm gonna put this out there. Yep. I read this book series during 
the quarantine lockdown. Uh-huh. And it was such a great thing to be able to read this because all the intensity and craziness going on in the world, this was like my bedtime story to kind of just help me sleep better. It's a book called Children of Blood and Bone. You know, I'm kind of a nerd. I like all this stuff like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Mm, are you into but, that? <laughs> yeah, all the Marvel comic stuff. I'm into that kind of stuff. And this book, Children of Blood and Bone, is written by Tomi Adeyemi, young black author. She's mm. Nigerian, first for first generation American Nigerian. Um, she wrote a wonderful series. I was mad that I got to the end of the second book because she's still writing the third book. And I was just like, damn it, now I gotta Where wait. You it's like, hurry up. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but it is like, if you took Black Panther, Harry Potter, wow, and like Amistad, mm. and, put, wow. it, and yep. put it together, it's it's so good. And she actually has a picture deal with um, George Lucas Films for the first oh, wow. book. Wow! So when I saw that, I was like, "Girl, <laughs> you, up, you early with that?" Oh, be in it. I want to be in it so bad. So, yep. so what what happened when you got a chance to talk to her? Because I know you reached out. Well, you know, I reached out. I tagged her on Instagram. She liked my post, and that's where we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, we we got we got to get her to holler. We speaking that we speaking that to existence. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. You're gonna be that you're gonna be the sister knight for her series. Word up, word up. Yeah, word up. yeah. <laughs> but D, yeah. like real quick, have you had a chance to talk to any of the former members of the group? Like, have y'all reconciled? Is there a reunion planned? Has there been a reunion planned? Like, what's the deal? <sighs> Oh, that was um, a woosah. That was a woosah. That was a woosah. Oh my god! It, it's been it's been a rocky road with those uh, females. Um, they did do a reunion. I want to say it was 2013 and 14, and it was very messy hmm. because I was not I was not involved. I did not want to be involved. Um, I was doing a lot of projects that meant a lot to me at the time. I did um, the movie with Monique. Um, Blackbird. Monique yeah, Blackbird. Yep. I was doing um, a couple of theater productions. I actually did the production that Candy wrote in, in oh, yeah. composed A Mother's Love. Yep. And then yep. there was, uh, I can't, I had a busy, it was a busy year. I was doing me. I was, right. I was really doing me. I was really coming into me. I was releasing music um, through wood grain. I was doing a lot of shows. I was really on a roll and they popped up with this reunion that seemed very um, manipulative, you know, manipulative on getting mm. people to come together and do it. And also manipulative on playing on the emotions of our fan base, you know, cause it, it wasn't right. The business wasn't right. The, there wasn't even a discussion about money. And these were all the reasons why this shit didn't work out in the first place. So, wow. you know, if you break up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you know, you broke up for a reason. And mm. if y'all come right. back together, those things need to be discussed. They need to be Saturday. atoned for, right. you know, and there was no discussion for that. And I was like, you know, I know the role that I played in, in the group. And I was, you know, I was bullied. I was unappreciated. You know, I was punished for the experience that I had that I wanted to share because mm. they were threatened by it. And so um, I was like, I'm not going to be I'm not going to put myself into something I can't go 100 percent in. But I, I can't go 100 percent with people that I don't trust. Like y'all, sure. y'all stabbed me in the back. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't have my back. It didn't have to end on ugly terms between us five because the real enemy was Puff. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? At the mm -hmm. end of the day. Um, but they didn't see it that way at that time for whatever reason, whatever they were going through, whatever their ulterior motive was and whatever. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go and I'm going to do me. 
And right. someone who actually talked to me and actually helped me feel confident about standing in my own power and believe it, betting on me was Q Parker. Oh, mm. 112. Q Parker from 112, because mm. we actually were doing a play at that time. And he he also did a mother's love with Candy Burris with me. So he was he was around me this whole time with of and and they made you know so much noise with the media, with our fans, with social media, with blogs and everything. D was isn't here, and it made it so ugly and backbiting and like catty. And I was trying to put out statements to be like, congratulations, the girls are doing this, they're doing that, you know, I'm doing other projects, so I hope you guys will congratulate me. But it was like, there was nothing I could say that mm. would make it like accepted or, and all they had to say on their end was like, yeah, congratulate Dee, she's, she's doing other things now and we're doing this. Like, that's all that had to be said. So our right. fan base, it's like, the kids are like, mommy and daddy don't love each other anymore. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to live with mommy. And fuck daddy. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, right, that's, right, right. that's how I looked at our fans. Like, you got to tell them what the tone is. Right. And it got so ugly to the point where it was like, yo, I can't, I can't even be, I can't even, we were never really friends in the first place, but now I don't even mm -hmm. think we can be cool. You know what I'm saying? Because right. They writing songs, subliminal message messages about me. They got fans making T-shirts with like a circle around my face with the slash, and it was like some. I had to get off Twitter. There was like so much cyberbullying going on. I was. It was. It was bad. Wow. <laughs> Yo, so, it was bad. But how did how did how did you like release that energy and deal with that kind of you know onslaught? back then how did you release everything and, and get to this place that you're at now um it was you know it wasn't easy you know what i'm saying um and i had people around me that kind of helped me focus on things that i did care about like i said q parker was like yo this is almost identical to me and my group and he was like if they can't honor the work that you have done by yourself to carry you from the time that, you know, y'all split up to now and the fan base that you've grown for yourself and the catalog that you've made for yourself and the, you know, things like they don't, if they don't honor that or even acknowledge it, then don't go back to a situation <laughs> like that, you know. That's kind, of hard. Um, That's kind of hard too because he's going through that kind of now with one twelve being separated from one twelve. He's, he's, yeah, he's not with them right now. That's crazy. Well, now you know why. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. and you don't you don't see, indeed you don't see that many groups out right now. Like for the last year or two, there's mm -hmm. not that many groups that that especially like black R and B groups, male or female. You don't really see mm -hmm. it. right. Yeah, I mean, and and I'm not a I'm not a against group type of person, um, because like I said, like I've been in theater, I've been in groups of people in dance companies, and then you know, the the group you know girls club with my sister and our, our other like associates and stuff. So it's like I do ensemble work all of the time. And I just know that it has to be the right group of people. It has right. everyone has to understand like why we're doing this, mm -hmm. and you know what you have to offer. What you have to offer, everyone has something that should be valued. And if that's not happening, there is going to be that resentment, and it's not going to work out. And of course, if you got somebody playing puppet master on the top hitting people against each other, you know, dividing and conquering, it's never going to work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sad mm. because, you know, people really, people really love <laughs> our music. And say, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of painful for me to listen to. Like, I don't even listen to it, honestly, because, you know, music is kind of like one of the strongest things that bring back memories. And so... Right. When I hear certain songs, I remember where I was, what I was wearing, yeah. what we was about to do. When I hear them songs, the memories that come back to me, I just would rather not. 
Mm. You know? Mm. So are, are there are there <laughs> like people now that you're listening to that you're feeling? Oh yeah, yeah. Um I'm I'm forever, forever Brandy fan. Like when Brandy and Monica mm. did their verses, like Ooh, I love Monica, man. but I was like, Brand is Brandy <laughs> on <laughs> 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 Um, Yo. there's a lot of um. I'm, I'm listening to a lot of Afrobeat because mm-hmm. that's what's happening right now. Yep. <laughs> so I'm definitely got the the Wiz Kid and the Burner Boy it. and people like that. Um, the T was Savage. Um, mm-hmm. of course. Um, you know Beyonce's uh Black is King. That was a beautiful. I was like, that was a beautiful like visual album. All oh, right, right, right. Visual was crazy. That was nuts. But like, like nice. the newer, the newer people that I'm digging. Um, shout out to my boy Lucky Day because Ooh. I know him from back in the day that when he was wasn't going by Lucky Day. I'm not gonna tell you. Are you ain't gonna blow him up. <laughs> 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 that Rolling, like I remember when Rolling dropped, I was like, I had it on repeat. Roll some more. Oh, mm-hmm. my goodness, I don't repeat all day for weeks. I, I, I love that song. Yeah, I'm really happy for him. And it's funny because be- right before right before things really popped off for him, I was I was doing a show. I was doing shows with Teddy Riley's um whole new jack new jack swing experience. No, no technical difficulties though. <laughs> no. <laughs> you wasn't in that crew. <laughs> and see, that's why when he did that, I knew what he was trying to do because Teddy be putting on a show. Yes. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. So I was like, I was doing a choreography. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, that was a fun experience. That I was really a real know. fun experience working with him. And he would bring out everybody, everybody that he's done records with. But like we did a show in LA and I saw a Lucky Day in the crowd and he was just bopping around Whoa. in the front. I don't know if he was trying to get my attention or what, but I was like, hey. <laughs> and then and when we were in, you know how it is, you do the show and you got to fly right out. So I didn't get to connect with him, but we were just texting. I was like, how's everything going? He's like, it's great. I want you to come to the studio. And I was like, oh, we got a flight right after that. Blew up. <laughs> Yo, you saw him on Soul Train last night with Babyface? Oh, I missed that part. Oh, I'm gonna have man. to run it back. You know they're gonna play it again. Yeah, they had uh, <laughs> Jimmy Jam and Terry Jam <laughs> again. Into mm-hmm. him and Babyface was on guitar for him. So, I mean, you have Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis introducing you, and Babyface on stage with you. Your setup is there. Yeah, I mean, he deserves it. He definitely deserves it. Some of my other friends were in the background. Adam Blackstone and the BBE band. Adam is actually, it's all Adam's fault. Adam is the reason why I even auditioned for making the band. Whoa. The, Cause, what, cause what was he playing last night? He's on bass. He was on bass. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, but you gonna see he he does everybody's show. He did Shakira and J Lo's um halftime show. He did Whoa. Justin Timberlake's halftime show. Oh, wow. He's done everybody. But when I met Adam, <laughs> <laughs> I was at you know I was at NYU, and. I don't know what year he was a super duper senior. He kept dropping out and coming back to school, but he was at UArts in Philly and he was always leaving to go on tour and, and play for people. But I remember mm. when he did, um, when he did the the show with Jay-Z, when Jay-Z was supposed to be retiring, what was that yeah. show? The, the, the Black. The Black. The um, Black album. Yeah. The Black the album. album. Yep, I, was I remember there. that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay. So I was working with Adam. I would, I would go take the train from New York to Philly, like almost every weekend, Whoa. and record with him in his mama's garage because he <laughs> had to sit up in there. And we were just making all these songs. And then, um, I was, you know, I was dancing for people on the road. Like I was doing the most. I was using like going on tour with Lil Bow Wow and like Lloyd and people like that for college credit. I was like acting like it was like an independent study. You and was doing this. You was doing this, D. Wow. I was like, so um, 
Adam hits me up and he's like, yo, I heard that Puff didn't choose a group. Cause he he did a whole season of girls and then he didn't choose a group out of that season. So I heard I heard that Puff didn't choose the group. You should audition. And I was like, and 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 why why do we think this is a good idea? Mm. <laughs> and he was like, "Man, what's the worst that can happen? You gonna smash, and then even if you don't get picked, we working on your project. You gonna make relationships, and we gonna circle back." And I was like, "Oh, that's a good idea." Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Adam. <Wow. laughs> so it's all Adam's fault, you guys. See? Adam, <laughs> it's his fault. It's his fault that we met you. It's his fault we shot you for king. Damn it, Adam! It's his it's fault your... that you right here rocking with us right you now. Man, <laughs> that is a man. What the hell is wrong with Adam? Damn, second season is <laughs> UMC series. Man, mess around with Adam's ass. <laughs> Damn it, on base. <laughs> right, on base. This is yo. You are amazing. Like this super, is super so dope. dope. Like for you to even hit back and be like, "Yo, I got you. Don't worry about it. We rocking." Um, yeah. I just want. I just want to say, like, we support you in all that you do for sure. We love Thank seeing you. you fight through everything that you fought through to come through with a smile. You don't. You don't sound like anything's gotten you all the way down that you couldn't get out of. We right. love hearing it because I think people would be inspired by everything that you said today. You know, the so. book. The book is being written. It's I well, can tell because it's a lot of material that you lot. that you going over and go, like man. And I know she gave us the short versions of some of that stuff. Goodness yeah. gracious! Goodness my mom. Gracious. I was just talking to my mother. Um, you know, because I'm I, I've been out here by myself um, since the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't get to do Thanksgiving with my family. We did like Zoom or whatever, Same. but. Also, another part of being out here that has been hard was I actually contracted COVID. Wow. And I had to be by myself and bring myself back to health. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so wow. my mother said, you have to write a book about some of the things you've done. And I was like, I'm still doing the stuff that I'm going to write about, mommy. So <laughs> yeah, It's still happening. But right. you got, got it. You got to make sure you're putting it down, though. Yikes. Yeah. It's all good now. Everything is straight. Yes, yes. I sure. had to, like, literally, Um, I got to L.A. on Halloween, mm -hmm. on Halloween night of all nights. And I, I was on the airplane. I had a mask. I had a face shield. I was like, you was all don't the way touch up. me. Yeah. But, but by the time I got to baggage claim, I was like, mm-mm. Something's up. Yeah. Something right. Um, something wow. right. So I believe I believe I was exposed to it in New York. Mm -hmm. But the fact that um, you know, they're doing the COVID tracing stuff, the guy was asking me all the questions, and I was like, I had a mask on on the plane. He was like, <laughs> right, What right. was the flight number, ma'am? I was like, Oh no. <laughs> wow. You <laughs> super no. spreader. You super spreader. <laughs> 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 Yo, but like, like the symptoms and everything you kind of felt. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was fighting, keeping my temperature down, fighting the fever, or whatever. So if you guys ever go through it, do not take ibuprofen, take Tylenol or something like that. Because um, they said something about ibuprofen kind of speeds up the, the virus in your body or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so Instead of breaking take, the fever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I had, I lost this, my sense of smell and I realized that cause I was making, you know, black folks, we make this detox elixir tea when we get yep. sick. I had garlic, ginger, cayenne uh, pepper, apple um, cider vinegar, lemon. I'm making that and I couldn't smell, you know, you, as soon as you yeah. crack open some garlic or apple cider vinegar, you can smell it. Right. And I was like, I don't smell nothing. I'm like, not nice. my sense of smell is gone. Wow. <laughs> but um, I was able to get through it. You know, I, I didn't have like the heavy, like hard pain. breathing, but I did have like a little bit of pains in my chest. And that was the thing that scared me the most. Because right. I was like, mm. oh, how much, how much worse is it going to get? Right, right, right. 
and they don't tell you nothing. They they can't really oh, tell no. you nothing. And I was like, I just don't want to have to. I don't want it to get bad where I have to go to the hospital. So I was right. just doing everything, loading up on all the vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, eating all the leafy green vegetables. Yep. Um, sea moss is my new favorite thing. Yeah, yeah. Get you some mm. sea moss. Sea moss. Mm. Word mm. up. That's real. Yeah. Wow. So, Survivor. I survived. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I Yo. had to have I had to have two negative COVID uh tests in a row to be admitted to start filming. So I got that. And we test like every other day. So I, I probably Yo. gotta get a test tomorrow since it's been a Thanksgiving weekend. Right, right. Right, <laughs> right, right. My goodness, man. Yo, best of luck with the new production. Keep us posted. Yes, yeah, stuck with you on UMC. You can watch season one now, and you can see what's happening. So you'll be ready for season two because it's getting even more steamy. It's all relationship drama, entanglements, and things like that. The the word of the year: entanglements <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> and let people know like where they can reach you. Definitely. Um, I am at Ya Girl D Woods, Y A Girl D Woods <laughs> on everything. That's on up. Instagram, Facebook, even though I don't really be on Twitter like that, but it's there. Um right. Beagle Live. I'm on Beagle Live. I don't know if y'all know about it. it's a new app. Find me there. My website is Miss M I S S D Woods.com. Definitely get my latest single that I dropped during COVID. It's called Call It Quits. Mm, it's quits. a bop. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, D. Thank absolutely, you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? what? One more thing before we get up out of here. I, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Uh -huh. You know, you, you, you're you a, you're a, you're a two-time, uh, you know, King alum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What who what what what's some of your favorite King magazine experiences? Like who are some of you know your your favorite uh you know King magazine covers if you uh, if you recall any? I'm I'm curious. Other than mine, other than uh, you. Now you're gonna now you're gonna get me the line. Wait, let me go look. Let me go look at some real see, quick. See, I see, mean, see, 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 see. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just one. I'm just I'm just curious. Game recognized game. Well, I know y'all you know had my favorite singer Brandy on there. Brandy was so, on there. Brandy was yes. on there. Brandy. Hey, hey. But um actually I'm I'm gonna give it up to you know the pioneers of this body game. All right. Let's let's give it up for Melissa Ford. Absolutely. Let's give it up for Great uh, Esther Esther Baxter. Esther Baxter, for sure, for sure, for sure. Esther. Buffy the body, she was a lot, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. I knew I was never gonna live up to her standards, but I mean <laughs> <laughs> Buffy the but one. With, but without those women, we wouldn't have a Meg the Stallion right now. That's real. We talk. wouldn't have, you know, the, the kind of appreciation that we have for uh Cardi B and for Nicki Minaj's body and even for like Lizzo's body, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I give it up to them, like just seeing them and being like, oh, okay, I'm kind of shaped like them. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more crunches because I want my stomach to be flat, but I want my booty to be right, too. You know, you know? Yaddy, 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 yaddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know she's been doing it. You know she's been doing it. You tried it. Oh, <laughs> see that? <laughs> 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 no, no, he no. was, he <laughs> was, he <laughs> was. But. Thank you. Always okay. love. Yeah, you you, you want to come back and kick it? Come back and highlight us. You know Anytime. this is family over there. Okay. When I want, I'm gonna have some new music when we when we cross over this this threshold of 2020. So I'll definitely hit you up about that. And it's up. We ain't hard to find. No doubt. Yeah. Oh, Much thanks. success. All right. D Wood. Peace, y'all. Take care. Peace, Be peace, safe peace, out peace. there. All right now. <laughs> Mwah.